Okay, so here we are, back for phase two of insane pentagonal, pentagonal rooms with no windows or doors, no way in, no way out. You're just stuck in the middle looking around at the art that surrounds you. But hey, it could be worse. I am going to select this object um, and I am going to leave it in opaque mode. I'm not going to go into x-ray mode yet. Um, and I'm going to change my view mode up here. So we've got four view modes. We've got wireframe, we've got solid view, we've got material view, and render view. You can see the difference between material and render is we can see the effect of the light creating this shadow. So here, um, going to material view, I'm now going to set this object with its materials, which are going to include both the color or texture of the wall, and they are going to include our images. So my image is still selected, and we've got all these tabs going down here. We've got render, output, um, layer properties, modifiers. Um, on the way down here, we have material properties. So I'll click that, and we'll see, oh my gosh, this object has no material properties. So we need to create a material. So I'm gonna click on new, and I'm going to call this material walls. Now for the walls in my scene, I want to give them sort of like a grayish purple color, because why not? So here in the base color, I just click on that and I get this kind of color setting business similar to other image editors. And there we go. I have a room in my house this color. The paint is called Destiny. A brush with destiny. Um, so here we go, we've got this color and we've got some other settings. We're not going to go into these in depth right now. I am going to make the wall rougher. I'm going to change the roughness here and um, that will essentially just make the walls less reflective. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add, I'm going to add materials for each of our images. So up here I'm going to press plus to create another material. I'm going to select new and instead of selecting a color next to base color I'm going to click on this yellow dot and I'm going to go through this menu of many different options and choose image texture. So it's in the texture column kind of towards the middle image texture and now this little image box comes down here. I could use open here and go through the folders to pick each image but because I already dragged them into my scene I click here and I can see there are my five images. So I'll select, select one and it's calling it material one. I could rena rename this to one wolf or whatever, but because the number corresponds, I'll be able to keep track of what's what. So now I'm gonna do the same thing again. New material, new type of material, select special option next to base color, image texture, This time number two, and we just keep going. I'll try to speed up a little bit. So you can see here that these little spheres next to the material do show you the material wrapped on, around the sphere, but you can't really tell what's going on. So you may notice that even though we've added all these materials to this shape, that it's still purple, and that's good. That's what we want the walls to be, this grayish purple color, or whatever color you choose. So I'm gonna stay in the material viewport viewing mode. I'm going to hit tab to leave object mode back to edit mode and now I'm going to can I do these at the same time? No. Now I'm going to click each of these faces and I'm going to extrude it a little bit so it comes out of the wall. So if I press E I can pull it in or out and it chooses this arbitrary axis based on the way the face is um, facing which is good. I'm going to turn off the snap function here. I actually meant to turn that off earlier. And now I'll hit E and I'm just kind of eyeballing this here and you might notice that in the top left corner of the screen there's a number that's changing that's showing in meters how far I've extruded this from the wall. It looks like 0 0.03 looks pretty good. So I'm just going to hit 0 0.03. Oh, but it's going in, so erase that. Negative, minus key, point, 
zero, three. And now my picture just sticks out of the wall a little bit. So I'll go to the next one and press E and I press minus 0 0.03. There we go. E minus 0 0.03. E minus 0 0.03. And last time, letter E and then minus 0 0.03. Now I'm not clicking anywhere to put these numbers anywhere specific. I just type them and it, it, it's putting them in the right place. Now you may have noticed that I'm negatively extruding these panels, even though they're coming out from the wall. And the reason for that is my shape is inside out. And that's kind of a problem. So we're going to address that right now. So up here in the views where we can switch between different view types, I'm gonna keep it in material view. Um, we have this option for different view overlays. All sorts of stuff in here. We're gonna try to ignore all the other stuff and just choose face orientation. And having clicked on that, we now see that the outside of our shape of our, of our object is blue and the inside is red. We want it to be the opposite. Keeping in mind that we're still in edit mode, I'm going to press A to select everything. Um, it's good that I'm in face mode actually, so I'll press 3 first and then A. And now we've got these different menus here. I'm going to select Mesh, and then there's an object here called Normals. Normals is another word for types of objects in our scene. So in this case, um, the normals are referring to our faces. And we are going to choose this first option here, Flip. Now, that was kind of a complicated set of menus here, so a little digression that will make things easier in Blender. If you go to Preferences and Key Map, you can set your spacebar action to be Search. If you're using a um, Windows computer or a desktop with a full set keyboard, F3 is also Search, but if you're using a new MacBook, that key is you know, stuck in the touch bar and it's kind of a pain to get to. So having set that to search, I can now press the space bar anytime. And if I were just to type flip, you can see that option flip normals comes right up. So I don't have to remember where it is in the menu. Um, we have flipped our normals, so I'm just gonna hit escape. So now the inside of our shape is blue, which means that this is now the exterior and the red is the interior. Or a better way to think of it is the blue is the front and the red is the back. So I believe if I were to extrude again, and I do 0.5, yeah, now it goes the right direction. Now for actually extruding, it doesn't matter. I mean, it's not that big a deal to press minus and put it in a negative value, but for the next stage, it is important that our, um, that our object has the right um, side orientation. So having corrected this, I personally find the red and blue quite distracting, so I'm going to go back into this overlay menu and turn off face orientation. And I'm just looking at my image, my object um, in object mode again, and now we can see those um, faces protruding where the pictures are gonna go. So I'll press tab again, and I will select the first face, and now in the material tab here, so we've got all these different tabs, I'm going to select material one and then I'm going to select assign and it sort of put my picture on but it looks all weird so before I go to the next one I'm going to press the um, letter U which stands for unwrapping or UV editing and now this menu comes up and I'm going to select the first option unwrap now this came out surprisingly well I'm going to show you what to do if it doesn't in a moment so I'll next, select the next face, select Material 2, Assign, hit the letter U, where I have to be hovering over the geometry, hit the letter U, letter U um, unwrap. This one looks weird. We'll come back to it. When I said hovering over the geometry, um, something that's a little tricky in Blender is if my mouse is hovering here and I press a key command, it doesn't apply to this work zone here. So you have to make sure your mouse is where you're working. So now I'll select the next one. And this one is cropped and sideways. 
I don't know why some of these images worked well and some of them didn't. I checked all these images in Photoshop and they all have the same settings on them. So it's a little bit of a mystery to me why this ended up the way it did. Um, but in the next section, we will learn how to fix this. So that resumes this section and we will check in in the next video.